Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to the second part of my how to make videos for YouTube tutorial. So this time we're going to be looking at XSplit. XSplit is another fantastic program for capturing video. Again, it is not free, although there is a free trial that you can test out. Um, but it is really, it, I found it was a really, really good investment. I think it's great software, you know, can't recommend it enough. Uh, note, if you're just looking for something that you can use to live stream with, there is something called uh, the Open Broadcaster Software, OBS, obsproject.com. It is free, open source, live streaming software, and many of the top streamers out there for StarCraft and League of Legends and many other games uh, really swear by it, and apparently it's, it's really good. Uh, the reason I use XSplit, because I, I do use this to stream, um, XSplit also lets me record to my computer in a really good way. I've, I've played around with OBS a little bit, and at the time, it wasn't really well suited to my purposes. Uh, things may change, so definitely make sure to check it out, especially if it's been a few months since this video was recorded. Um, so... Yes, XSplit. Okay, so there's a few settings to talk about in here. There's, there's the potential for a little bit more setup. Fraps is really simple, very fire and forget. XSplit needs a little bit more work. You need an account on XSplit. You need, um, and you need to set up these scenes. So you've got these different scenes that you can sort of flip between. Uh, you know, if we've got this. Do I have short break set up? There you go. I use these when I'm live streaming, so you can have these different setups. Um, and you really want to reference the XSplit documentation itself for how to set up all of these different scenes. We're not going to go through all of this, although I will show you how to do this chroma key effect, this sort of green screeny effect. Um, and more importantly, I will show you the settings that I use for the local recording especially. Now the problem is, um, I can't actually access my settings while I'm recording. So what I did is I went and took some screenshots of my settings. So this is my general settings screen inside of XSplit, and most of it I think is um, is the default settings. Um, I, I'm not sure. I might I might have explicitly set the enable arrow theme uh, thing. I'm not positive. Um, you definitely want game source um, activated. Game source will let you directly copy um, the input from a game very much the same way that you do in Fraps. And the reason you want that is because XSplit can do two things. XSplit right now. I've got it set to just record my desktop sort of directly. Um, and that works, and, and if you're running a, a game in windowed mode, this will generally work to capture the game. Um, but often there'll be sort of a little bit of lag and latency and different things like that just because of the way it's sort of capturing the data. Whereas if you go and you go add and you add a game and you pick up a game that it detects, it, it finds sort of DirectX and OpenGL uh, processes that are running, and it can hook into that and then it can get the data more directly. Um, and you tend to end up with much, much better results. Um, now, the advantage that XSplit has over Fraps is that XSplit, when you do a local recording, it does, it does encode it right away. So you don't need the extra step of going through Handbrake. Um, you know, whether your computer can handle that or not is a whole other thing. And generally speaking, the encoding that I get in XSplit is somewhat uh, less good, somewhat m l lower quality than my, my Fraps workflow, because my Fraps workflow, by the end of it, I've, I've sort of kept the quality rather high. Now, I find that the result in XSplit is fine in the end. I mean, you guys can be the judge of this video. Um, I, I think it's fine, although I just realized I'm probably doing this in 720p. Yeah, Co one of the things is that in, uh, I hope this menu pops up, yeah. Uh, one of the things that I found that uh, XSplit doesn't really, for me, record 1080p at full speed the way I would like. So I tend to use XSplit in 720p. Um, and then I have to make a decision of whether I want to be able to use the built-in camera, which I can only do through XSplit, or if I want 1080p, which means using Fraps. So, you know, there's there's some back and forth there. And maybe when I'm recording my desktop like this, I could have done 1080p perfectly fine. It's just maybe gaming. So your mileage will vary. It'll depend on your computer and your setup and all kinds of things. Um, so, yes, settings. Uh, I will be talking about my microphone and other hardware considerations in my next video, so you can go and check that out. But this is the microphone I use, the Blue Yeti. Very good. Um, other than that, I'm pretty sure everything is uh, the default. Use WinXP. You're going to want to check the XSplit uh, documentations on that if you're having weird uh, sound sync issues and things like that. There are many, many different kinds of audio and sync issues that you will, ha you will experience at some point or other recording, so you're going to become an expert on that. Um, so the next thing you can do is, is uh, configure your channels, and I don't have that, I don't have a screenshot for that, um, but you can add something like if you stream to Twitch TV, you can add Twitch TV, put in your username and password, and uh, it'll, it'll get that all configured. Um, and also in, as a channel, is where you set up local recordings, that's where you record things onto your computer. Now it's important to note, if you were just to stream to, to something like Twitch.tv, 
Um, Twitch.tv does keep a copy of your video files on Twitch TV. You can re-download those and then upload them to YouTube. Um, and also, when you configure your channel, your Twitch TV channel, for example, you can tell it to keep a local recording of anything that it streams out there. Uh, so you don't have to set up the special local recording channel. But the advantage of doing that is that you have the ability of greatly controlling what the the settings are on here. Um, Oh, no, that's very interesting. I hadn't realized. I just updated to uh, the 1.2 version of XSplit, and I hadn't realized the screen had changed until just now. I didn't even really look while I was taking the screenshot. Um, but yeah, when you set up the local recording source or destination, then you have more fine control over the encoding, and what you can do is you can configure a higher quality encoding than what you use to send to Twitch.tv you know, or, or any streaming website where you're really capped by your bandwidth because you need to be able to stream in real time, so it's going to be pretty damn compressed. Whereas your local recording, you can afford to have it be higher quality because if you're taking this and uploading it to YouTube or Vimeo or something like that, it's okay that it takes longer to upload than the video is. It's a 30-minute video, and it takes an hour and a half to upload to YouTube, that's okay. But if you were trying to do that on Twitch.tv and it literally takes three times as long to upload and to record, then there's no more real timeness and it's it's miserable. Um, anyway, the um, this is definitely a different screen. Um, see, it says extra pram with data here. Shoot. Shoot, 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 shoot. Damn it. Uh, sorry about this, guys. What I was going to tell you is the B-frame thing again. There's the ability to disable B-frames, and it's very important to do that, otherwise when you upload your file to YouTube, it will look not right. And I I don't want to restart this video because I've already done that more than once. Uh, I don't know if this is a gear you can click on or whatever. The, the command that you're going to try to put in somewhere is you're going to try to set... Come on, give me my text editor. Thank you. You're going to try to set B-frame. B-frames zero. Okay? Um, double check the documentation. There's lots of references to this on the XSplit forums and on the XSplit blog. Uh, you set B frames to zero uh, when you're recording this, and then it just makes it work properly on YouTube. There is one extra gotcha, though, um, in that if you want to take your video and cut it, if you want to split it in halves or thirds or something like that, um, or if you want to take off the, the front or the back of the video, um, or if you want to bring your video into something like Premiere and do editing, you will find that the video and audio very quickly falls out of sync. And the reason is that XSplit records using a variable frame rate, which is, which is very good and it's important because of the way that it's recording it and there's not really a way around that. But when you try to edit a file with a variable frame rate, the video and sound, because they don't, the ticks sort of don't line up for them, uh, when it, you cut, you get this sort of offset and it, it stops working properly. Um, I will try to make, in addition to my hardware video, I will try to make a video showing you how to sort of edit these files and do those sorts of things. The good news is, if you just take your complete file and upload it to YouTube like that, inside of YouTube you have the ability to do uh, enhancements to your video file. Now you're going to go in there and you're not going to care about color correction or anything like that, but it gives you the option of trimming the video and doing a save as. So what you can do is you can take your, you can upload, you know, your hour and a half video to YouTube, assuming you're a partner and you have the ability to do that. Um, yeah, okay, so maybe this device isn't great, but you can upload your full video to YouTube and then after that, go into this enhancement, trim it, you know, 20 minutes, save as, next 20 minutes, save as, and so forth. I will look into more specific ways of doing that on the computer later on. It is somewhat more advanced and not everyone needs it, so hopefully I'll get to that. Um, I'm not sure where the timeline for it is. Anyway, that is, um, that is XSplit. So the last thing I'm going to do is I will show you how to do this, this chroma keying thing. Um, so I'll turn this off first of all. The most important thing is you need a solid background. My background is actually crap for this because it's so full of wrinkles. And my lighting is not even ideal, so it's got shadows and things like that. Um, and yet, it works works well enough, I guess. Um, just realized, I think that was hidden. Mm, no, it was just hidden on my view. Still, I'll have it over here. Um, stop going away. So, you need a solid color background because what you're going to be telling XSplit is remove this one color. Uh, it's, it's a chroma. It's not, so that's, the color itself would be the color key. The chroma is a little bit more advanced and it's a combination of lighting and different, I, I, I don't know exactly what it means. It, it means that the color goes away. Um, so if I were to 
purposely muck this up. There we go. So obviously something is, is horribly wrong here. What you do is you can use the eyedrop tool and you select the background color. And that sets most of it okay. You probably still have to fiddle with some of the settings. It's going to be very dependent on your lighting um, and lots of things like that. If, uh, and again, I will talk about my, my hardware setup in the next video, um, but I use, um, I use this Logitech HD Pro webcam um, and make sure to update to the latest software. You want to turn off because a lot of these will have like uh, this right light thing. It will automatically change the exposure for you. So when you move and little shadows change, you know, sort of lightens and darkens the image. That will often screw up your, um, your chroma key. So you, need, you really need to kind of disable that. Uh, so that's, that's the one sort of gotcha that uh, I'll give you with that. But other than that, yeah, there's not much to do. You, uh, you do the, the, the drop, the eyedropper. And then you do have to, so that'll kind of set this color. And then after that, you fiddle with some of these other settings that you can see it, it affects sort of like how, how sharply it cuts things. It, it's color lighting. This will actually sort of fade the background. Um, sorry, this one. No, it's not even this one. Which one am I thinking of? I thought one of them made the background semi-transparent. I think this one does. It's just not doing it right now for some reason. So you, you do want to fiddle and you want to get things as closely as possible because if you set it sort of off, you'll see there's kind of some green fringing here. So you want to get it to just sort of the sweet spot where it goes, but then it doesn't eat your eyes. Um, and it's a combination of a few little dials that you're going to kind of fiddle with and get pretty okay. And part of the reason I wear the fedora is because hair, because it's so sort of thin, you'll see a lot of these artifacts here. Um, and it's not bad. And the better your lighting is, the less this will be a problem. So if you get really bright, great lighting, uh, it'll be a much sharper image because the, the bounce on the back. And again, if you were to iron the, uh, the backdrop, it would be that much better. You can see the NFI move, the sort of fringing effect. Now, this is less of an issue if you're on a moving background. People won't really notice it. But, you know, when in doubt, throw on a hat. Um, I think that's what I wanted to talk about. I think that completes the XSplit video. And so when we come back, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about hardware.